Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com Monday update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had a good trading day. Pardon me. Not a refuel, son. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for finding us, checking us out. Uh, giving a cuss a couple of minutes to kind of entertain you, to put a lot of nonsense in your head. And if you're lucky, if you're fortunate, if you squint really hard at your eyes, there could be a couple of nuggets here that you could actually use for your uh, trading of uh, going forward. And all jokes aside, market's been doing its thing. Again, we lost the 50-day. Sellers got tired. We reclaimed the 10. We reclaimed the 20. We said there was a shot at the 50, we got to the 50, and this is now day three above the 50, uh, and the market is going out of its mind. I think that's the best way of saying it. Uh, when you look at the final tally today, you had the Dow up another 200, you had the S&P putting in its eighth consecutive uh, green day up 1%, and you have the NASDAQ that reclaimed back the 50-day moving average on Thursday is up another 1.4%. And the question is, who could have seen this coming? Basically, anybody with a chart that's been trading for 15 minutes. And the idea that I saw over the weekend that people were talking about now that the, the, the NASDAQ was overbought, we reclaimed the 50-day moving average two days ago, literally two days ago, after a 9.5% sell-off, and now we're over. Okay. Anyway, be careful. <laughs> be careful where you get your... Uh, your ideas and ide ideologies and your process from it's a lot of stuff on the social internet. So be very, very careful. All jokes aside, guys, uh, you know, market continues to do very, very well. Uh, we have the leaders uh, breaking out as they did last week when they reclaimed the 50 day moving average. Some of you guys have been watching this broadcast for a while. Hate the word 50 day moving average because that's how important it is. But the most important part is, well, this is what kind of got the bulls back on their feet and they got them upright. And now, uh, they're going on a different, uh, on a vertical, uh, on a vertical line of success. And the most important part is this is something that you should really embrace, right? Even if this is the first time in the last couple of weeks that you heard the word 50 day moving average, you kind of put this in your mental Rolodex and for the next time. And you already know that above the 50 day is super bullish. Below the 50 day is super bearish. And again, all you need to do is reference the last five weeks. We lost the 50 day. We go down 9.4%. We get above the 50 day. We put in a massive, massive rally here uh, in the last three days. So it's something again, every single uh, day, every single week, every single month, every single year that goes by, sometimes you might not see immediate success, but you're building a foundation. It's like going to the gym, right? It's like going to the gym. And when you're like 190, 195 pounds, and you lived your whole adult life through 100, 175 pounds, and you start working out day one, you feel nothing, you see nothing. Day two, you feel nothing, you see nothing. Day three, you feel nothing, you see nothing. Eventually, day month two goes by. Mine three goes by, month six goes by, and then a year later, you turn around and say, holy crap, look what I just did, right? And that's kind of the whole point of, of trading. What you're putting in today is maybe not going to reflect on a monetary side tomorrow or the next day, or maybe next week or even next year, but eventually when all the dots connect and the, the T's cross and the dot and, and the I's dot, whatever the hell the expression is, eventually when it all clicks, every little thing that you've been doing getting into that point, it's going to start making a lot of sense. So all these little things, reclaiming big you know, big supply zones, uh, losing big demand zones, they're going to be a part of your life, regardless if you trade pivots, if you're an intraday trader, if you trade futures, if you trade uh, on the swing side, it's going to be part of your professional life. 
And the faster you learn about it, the first, the faster somebody tells you the significance about how big these areas are, you're going to have the light bulb moment. You're going to have that moment of clarity and your learning curve is going to be expedited instead of doing the same thing over and over again. You know, the market loses the 50 day moving average. The market's over, oversold and it goes down nine and a half percent. How could something be oversold or overbought if that day or the day before has reclaimed it? It, it doesn't make any sense. Folks, trust the charts. Everybody has the same data in front of them. You don't need to ask 20 people on social media, what do you think about the trade? If you have a chart in front of you, you're getting the same data as Warren Buffett. You're getting the same data as uh, Peter Lynch, uh, David Einhorn, anybody under the sun who trades the market, maybe except for Kathy Wood. She is not a true. Okay. But otherwise, right? Other than her, right? Other than her, I'll be nice. Other than her, you know, everybody has the same data. When you have the same data and you understand the ramifications of big dramatic levels, you're going to see big moves or should be getting big moves all those levels. Again, if you look at every single stock we talked about in the last three, four days that reclaimed the 50-day, look what happened, right? Again, it's it's the same thing over and over again, right? It's the light blue line. That's the 50-day. Netflix goes bananas, right? Avago goes bananas, okay? Tesla in the last couple of days, peep the shirt, right? Peep the shirt. Tesla reclaims the 50-day moving average, goes bananas, NVIDIA that I closed out today, right? That I closed out today from this 120 reclaim of the 50-day moving average goes bananas. It, it It's not, the stocks that are going crazy right now, they're not random. They just busted through major supply. Again, imagine a drowning victim, right? Let's look at the video, for example, right? Imagine a drowning victim. Every single time they hit the blue line, it's basically coming up for air and somebody brings them right back down. And there again, they're dying, they're dying, they're dying. And they get back up here. Uh, you're about to get some air. You're about to get some air. And somebody pulls you right back down. And you're dying. You're fighting to get back. And as soon as you get back up, right? As soon as you get back up and you finally get to breathe that air, and you take a deep breath. And here's the ramifications. You got a very, very big move. So if you look at stocks, and then I talked about it on the weekend video. I give you guys uh, you know, a whole bunch of names. Uh, that were reclaiming those levels or going sideways, continuation plays. That's what the market is embracing right now. That is the market that is pushing right now. That's where institutional money flow is going, are the names above the 50-day. And as I said on the weekend update, the more and more, right, the more and more we continue to build above the 50-day moving average, the higher probability that more stocks are going to get pulled up above it. It's very, very important. Again, Keep this in mind, like I said on the weekend video, it doesn't mean the market is going to go up every single day. It's a very, very key point that you have to understand. At some point, the stocks that broke out two, three, four, five, eight days above their 50-day supply, don't touch them, okay? Eventually, don't touch them because they're going to be jumping out of the 12th floor instead of jumping out of the first. But there are so many names still below supply that are taking baby steps, right? They're taking a little bit of baby steps here and there that are approaching their 50-day moving average, maybe in the next couple of days, maybe in the next couple of weeks. But those are going to be the next, especially if you're a big options trader. Once you get above the 50-day, that's when your big measure potential trade starts because it's not a one day. It becomes several weeks. It's, it's a multi, multi-day, multi-week event when a stock finally uh, gets above uh, above water and starts to breathe, that's exactly uh, what we're seeing. And again, if you look at uh, if you look at uh, the weekend pivots, again, we talked about majority of all these names that have big moves today, right? Oracle still hasn't confirmed, right? Guys, write this down. It's right here, thirty eight bucks, right? Thirty eight dollars. Look at Oracle's chart. Okay, look at Oracle's chart right now. It hasn't confirmed yet. Okay, you see how it keeps on getting rejected? It's the same thing as Nvidia. You see how it keeps on getting rejected off the 50-day? Every single day, it just gets back up to it, and then they push it back down. It gets back up to it, and they push it back down. If this thing could put in a new base above 138, it should start a let next leg up, 140 and a half and maybe 144 if it has enough juice, if the market uh, can, can sustain uh, much more strength. But that's what you're looking for. You're looking for names that are below the 50-day are ready to get above. Look at this other one. Uh, let, me, let me find a symbol. EWTX, right? 
It's not exactly the thickest stock in the world. Today, again, I'm not personally going to trade it. I only traded 475,000. But here's my point. It just needs to get back above the 50-day moving average, right? The last time it got back above the 50-day, it went from 18 to 23.50 in two weeks. All it needs to do is just get it back above this 50-day moving average, and this thing could see 21, this thing could see uh, 22 and change. So that's kind of what I'm looking for on the 50-day moving average. But if you look at all the pivots today, again, strength to strength. That's the whole point. Crowd, we talked about crowd. Again, all you need to do is go back to the weekend video. We talked about crowd. 263.65 needs to build. Here was crowd. They were coming from the 270s. And the stock went to 271. Big move, right? Big move on crowd. First close now above the 20 uh, day supply. Uh, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA uh, breakout was 120. Uh, I talked about it in the morning. I go, look, 125 needs to build to continue the momentum from the 50 day breakout that we got long on Wednesday. I go, my target is 127s for all you guys who are holding runners. That's what I did. I sold my last piece in the 127.20s which sucks because the stock closed at 130. But the point is, listen, from 120 to 127 in four days, I'm good, right? I'm good. Tesla, again, continues his breakout. Uh, 219.80 needs to confirm last week's breakout of 208.50. Here was Tesla. Uh, Tesla, they continue to, here's Tesla basically closing at the highs uh, at 223. Again, look how much room you have here, uh, guys. You have the whole uh, gap fill potential to 234 area. Why that's important? They're coming for the next two weeks of expiration, the 230 and the 232 uh, week weekly and the 232. I'm sorry, let me back up. The 230 weeklies and the 232.50 next week's expiration. So this thing uh, still has room to go. But again, Tesla's been uh, absolutely great. Uh, we ended the weekend update with uh, Google. You guys remember that? Google, uh, 165 rejected twice, uh, needs to build. Here is Google, the highest close now in this whole formation. Took out the 65, put in the highest close here. It's traded right to the 20-day supply of 166.69. Again, it still has a lot of work to do before it gets to the 50-day moving average. But again, that's my point. Baby steps, right? Some of these stocks need baby steps with a nice little move on Google, and then we have some more. We got some more. TTD. Uh, TT, guys, watch TTD for tomorrow. It closed right at the breakout level. Watch TTD for tomorrow, guys. Keep an eye on this thing. Look at this chart, right? Look at this daily here. Look at this uh, Look at this weekly chart here, right? This thing's setting up really, really nice. So keep an eye on this thing tomorrow, especially opening range highs. Uh, and do you guys remember we were talking about UPST, right, on the weekend update? 39 needs to build. Last week, they were coming for uh, the October 50 calls. And today, they were coming for the weekly 40s and 42s. And look what UPST did. Beautiful move. Beautiful, beautiful move. Took out the 39, closed out the highs of the day at 4060s. Uh, it has room here to the 4140s before it comes to a little bit more supply. And I believe, oh no, Chewy, Chewy, uh, Chewy reports uh, this week, 27 and a quarter needs to build. Uh, buyers were coming in for the 32 weeklies ahead of earnings. Not a huge move, uh, but Chewy spiked, you know, Chewy spiked about 50, 60 cents. Nothing crazy, but again, this is the highest close in the whole formation. Uh, so looks good here, right? Looks good here. So bulls continue uh, to move. Um, you have you have uh, earnings from NVIDIA coming up next week. They're running, running this thing up. Uh, use weakness, or excuse me, use profit taking, right? Use profit taking in the next couple of days on NVIDIA, on Tesla, anything that really started cranking above the 50 day in the last three days and use them as areas to start a uh, position. So let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow, okay? We talked about uh, EWTX, we just talked about TTD. Let me give you guys some ideas. You talked about Oracle just now. Let me give you guys some idea. AMD, AMD this morning had a PR that they're buying an IT server company for $5 billion to compete with uh, NVIDIA, right? Compete with NVIDIA. Stock had a major, major move. Why is this move impressive? It's not, it's not this move that's impressive. It's what potentially could happen next. You see the light blue line, guys? Right? Everybody see the light blue line? 
All it needs to do is get above it, right? All it needs to do is get above it for the next leg up. So keep an eye on AMD. Another 50-day break for a potential smaller name. Look at NVAX, right? NVAX had this massive, massive move uh, in the summertime. You know, this thing closed above the 50-day, guys. Watch NVAX tomorrow. This thing can re reclaim, uh, confirm the 50-day moving average today in today's channel. This thing could wake up as well. So again, folks, there's a lot of really great value. Um, I trade mega cap technology. That's my area. That's my expertise. Uh, that is my sweet spot. That is my warm, cuddly blanket. But again, technical analysis is technical analysis. Again, there's no difference between an AMD break of the 50-day or an NVAX break of the 50-day, right? Obviously, one is going to give you a bigger move, but the point is you can trade whatever you feel comfortable. You're not trading, you know, you're not trading a specific sector. You're trading the process, and that's exactly what keeps us up, right? Keeps the lights on and keeps us going every single day. Guys, great job, everybody, today. Uh, great job, great job, great job. With God's help, we'll do it again tomorrow. God bless everybody. I'll see you all in the field tomorrow.